So you're worried still about uh, th that some of the unemployment uh, insurance that, that we've done actually hurts the labor supply because it's easier not to work than to work. Is that still an issue that, that needs to be, uh, it, it, we need to be very aware of um, just for the overall economy? Yeah, I think in terms of the stimulus that's on the table, I think that two lessons we learned from CARES are not really addressed, I guess, by the big government coalition of Pelosi and actually Mnuchin, it looks like. So the, the incentives, there's two components to what we learned. One is obviously the incentive issue, and, and I think it's underappreciated. I mean, there's still, even with the $300, there's a majority of workers who are facing more than 100% tax rate, implicit tax rate on work. So imagine me going on ZipRecruiter and posting a job saying, I, I want you to work for me, but I also want you to pay for working for me. A lot of, like, very few people would sign up, I guess. I think economists, you know, are very, very concerned about those kind of dampening incentives on the, on the labor supply side. Uh, the second lesson that came out of CARE is, was that the liquidity was not targeted enough. Obviously, there's a lot of people hurting that need help because of COVID that just don't have any a market for what they're doing in sort of group consumption industries, if you want. And But, you know, if you look at personal disposable income, I'm sure you looked at it, this program, but it was four times the growth of a boom, of a good boom. We had a 45% annual growth in personal disposable income, which is, private income plus government income. And in a boom we have, we're lucky to have about 10% annualized growth in a, in, a, in a quarter. So that's telling you that it's not targeted enough. Uh, and you could have helped a lot more of hurting people with better targeting. Uh, I mean, I, I, Becker Friedman, so I understand where you might be coming from on, on, on some of this stuff. You're not convinced um, that issuing government bonds, i.e., borrowing money and then giving it to others as far as stimulus doesn't really help with total economic activity and jobs may actually decrease. Now, that sounds cold and, and obviously people are, are in need, but you go on to point out the most important thing we could do is, is, is get a vaccine. And, and I, I don't know if people, some of your, your comments are interesting. It's $15 billion a day it's costing us as the virus spreads in health and economic activity. So in one day, if we got a vaccine, that would pay for all of Operation Warp Speed, the, the whole $10 billion. You also point yeah, I mean, out, uh, if, it, yeah. if it was ready in January of 2021, versus June of 2021, that comes to $1.8 trillion. So what we got to do is handle this this this, vac this virus yeah, through the yeah, vaccine. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's the best government investment I've ever heard of when you get a you know, return on $10 billion, roughly, you generate $1.8 trillion. So uh, if you think of the art of the deal, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, I think what's more important now with the rollout is that mortality is so concentrated in the non-productive part of the population, i.e. the old and retired individuals, and that you know you have 85% of mortality is in 15% of the population about 65. So what's important in the rollout is to get the high risk people vaccinated. And then it doesn't matter if the vaccination rate is low, because once you take care of the high risk individuals, You've sort of broken the chain between young people going to the market and, and or becoming economically active, and, and, and old people getting it when they come home. So I always advocated a twofold strategy. I, I advocated this in March uh, this year to the president, where it's sort of a, a low mortality, high growth strategy, where you take care of, you isolate or invest in taking care of the high risk individuals. And at the same time, you let the low risk individuals who are the young uh, drive the economy. And that's what the vaccine rollout needs to do. And one way of doing that is basically making Medicare a requirement for participating in Medicare is that you get your, back, uh, you get your shot as an old individual, assuming obviously that there's no severe side effects. We can sort of induce people. But tying va the vaccine to a public program, we do that for schools. And I think we should do that for old people in, in Medicare and Medicaid, which actually takes care of a lot of long-term care, care facilities. So making an eligibility requirement 
to have the vaccine for high-risk individuals. 